Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with you Nishafiri. In this video, we are going to see some recursion in Kotlin and some of the unique features that Kotlin provides in order to deal with really deep recursion calls. Let's get started. So here I'm having just a normal factorial function, like we can rename it this factorial, it doesn't have to have that name, right? And we can run it, as you can see, it will print for the 10, but if we go a little bit bigger, it will be a problem. Well, why zero? Because number is really big. It can't fit in long here. So maybe let's refactor it to use big integer. Why not? Now, if you run this function, we will see that it produces a number as you can see. Now, if you want to go more deeper than that, right, and run it, here we will go into a problem as you can see. Most of the languages have this problem with it, which is stack overflow error. Now, mainly in almost all languages, we have two types of memories. We have the heap memory and the stack memory. So the stack is much smaller than the heap, of course. We use it in some smaller scopes, right? So if you have a function that declares some variables, they will be stored in the stack. And then immediately after the execution of like that thread, that function, it will discard those variables. But here, since you are calling function after function, we will keep those calls into the stack and going deeper as you can see it will produce a problem so how we can deal with this type of problems of recursion one of the ways to solve this problem is simply to rewrite this factorial function in another form which is the normal loop version this will mean that this function will execute on the heap and that way we can fix it there is other way around but before that, to understand why it is happening, you should picture the stack. I have written a small program in order to show what is happening under the hood. Here is the same kind of algorithm, like with some formatting and printing. You will see what is happening under the hood. We start calling factorial of 10, and this will produce 10 multiplied by the factorial of 9. And it can't be evaluated yet. We need to multiply 10 by 9 by factor of 8 and so on, so on, so on, until we reach the bottom of the, or the bottom of the stack, but the bottom of the calls here, right? And then we will start evaluate. You can picture that with 10,000. If you go to 10,000 like that, you will see why it produced prop. Let me just put it here and run it. You will see why it produced this kind of problem because we are going too deep. We are going too deep. Okay, I don't know the lock at here isn't log isn't possible to display everything here but you get the you get the idea so one of the ways to fix that issue as you said is to rewrite this program in loop fashion way right that would work but also you can rewrite it in order to be tail recursive what does it mean problem here we are not evaluating the multiplication until the end what we can do we can evaluate partially the result and pass the result into the factorial function so what we need to do here we will try to pass something called for instance, the accumulator, and yes, it will be just simple long here, why not? And it will be one. And we need to pass this number all the time. So here we will simply calculate the partial result of the factorial, so we will do the multiplication here. Yeah, let's call it the partial result, and it will be n multiplied by accumulator. That simple. And now, here, what we should return is simply this one. We should return n minus one, of course, and the accumulator. No, sorry, not the accumulator, but the partial. So the partial will be the result. So here is the final format, like I had to map some things here. So here we need to change that to a big integer, and we do the multiplication using big integer thing, and we return this partial result if it is the final operation, otherwise we will pass it. So here, if you run this program, for 100, it will be, yeah, I think this is correct. Yeah, let me check for the 10. I think it's were exactly. Now let's test really big numbers and see if we have that problem. And as you can see, we still have this kind of problem, which is normal stack or flow thing. What we need to do here, like after converting this to tail things, still we are loading a lot of things into the memory or into the stack. What we need to do simply to use something called tail drag here. So this is understood by the compiler of the Kotlin, of course, to convert this function into a normal for loop. Here, if you run it now, it won't produce that problem. As you can see, we have the final problem. Even if you go like much, much bigger number, it will wait, of course, for some time, of course, because the multiplication is so big. <clears throat> but at the end, the issue we are solving here, 
we won't have that problem of sorry the number was too big i have to cancel it but as i said if you run like really big numbers it won't be a problem it will be calculated right away i think it will produce the number exactly if you add one more zero it will take much time i think but let's try it yeah it will take some time but this is it like under the hood what is happening is that kotlin compiler is converting this function into a normal for loop function so if you check here the tools for kotlin bytecode the compiler code while waiting for the result at least we are not doing like stack overflow here i know the result is too big but let's wait for it here what is happening is that we are doing a normal for loop where is it big integer factorial as you can see we are doing a while loop and like with normal while loop we can go normally and with normal while loop it won't be problem everything will be calculated on the heap and yeah that's it for this tail rec function tail recursive function it's just an instruction for the compiler to convert this recursive function to a while loop but why we didn't try the why loop directly why we are writing this as a recursive call simply put recursive are more natural sometimes with imperative code it will be a problem to read the function to understand what it's doing but with recursive it feels much more natural because some problem are recursive by default so it makes sense to use them as recursive cops there is another way kotlin provide a different thing to convert this type of function into something we can execute on the heap which is the deep recursive function deep recursive function we are going to use that to implement our factorial so what will do this thing it will call each other call the recursive function on the heap and not on the stack to avoid the problem of uh, stack overflow so here we will define another function let's call it factorial with let's just factorial with something like that and we'll pass our long we don't have to pass any other thing and here we will simply return a big integer but we will forward this call to another function that we will create locally here which is the deep recursive function this deep recursive function we take a long as parameter and a big integer as a return type and since this is an experimental call we will call it like that and we will simply do we will invoke it with the n of with the n number and we will have to return everything so here what we need to do like we will get past the current x the current n like uh, as it gets reduced so we we'll do like that with the x and here when we can use the f or we can use like normal when so here what we did when n is one here n is the pass but here we don't use n since that the initial value right so we need to do x lesser than one what we are doing here we are returning the partial which is the first so it will be get integer dot one okay else what we will do simply is what we will continue how we can call that recursive function keep in mind that this is not the recursive function we do have a special way to mention that we are calling the recursive which means call recursive okay here is the call recursive thing we need to pass x minus one but this is not it we need to multiply it by this number so it will be x like that to big integer we will convert it to big integer and we will multiply it by call recursive and that way it will work now if we do the same thing here factorial with what 10,000 oh, okay that won't, won't work let me just run for 100 to see if this is working fine this is it you can extend to bigger numbers and it will work just fine as you can see let's add one more number and yeah exactly it hangs like the previous one but it is working as you can see we got a result we can try to check which one performs better so here what we can do we can run it inside yeah let me just put it here inside measure times mill. we can do here and then we can print everything right let's run it how much time it's taking 17 milliseconds okay let's run the first one which is with the trail tail tag factorial like that run it please 70 60 so there is a difference in the functions that well we can 75 right now so as you can see it's changing so even if we try the width it will be changing also check 17 66 69 68 
Yeah, so there is some average in the SLT index, but they are the kind of the same way in order to avoid deep recursion. This, on the other hand, will be just a recursion call, but it will be on the heap, as we said. But this will be converted into a normal while loop that, of course, will run on the heap. So the point here, we are trying to avoid the stack overflow exception problem. That's it. That's the two unique features that Kotlin provide in order to implement like de really deep recursion Kotlin. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamualaikum.